depending on how many friends or whatnot you have playing, there are different activities you can do, but that is one of the areas that Black Desert is still lacking. Not friends? So, we have not watched an Evil Do Us Harm video on this channel yet. Um, but... He absolutely deserves uh, the love, not that he needs the visibility or anything, but uh, my man has 158,000 su subscribers, yeah, on YouTube. Look right there, yep. Actually crazy. Evil Do Us Harm has been making videos for Black Desert for like six or seven years, and then before that he was making videos for another game. The guy is a legend. Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here. This is a, is Black Desert worth playing in 2024? Complete game overview and my opinion. Let's see what he has to okay. say. I will say that um, he hasn't put out a crazy amount of content other than like patch note rundowns lately, but like, again, his his guides are basically all encompassing. It's pretty crazy. Back with another Black Desert video. Now it has been almost two years since I came out with my last video here of Black Desert being worth to play in 2022. That's because it wasn't worth playing in 2023, but we can do one for 2024. Do, and I think it's about time I put out an update for 2024. Hey, you just gave 2023 so, a skip. Today's just... video, we're going to be taking a look at the state of Black Desert in 20. Okay, uh, the state of your character, it needs to be fixed. I'm not going to say which part of the character needs to be fixed, but... 24, what we got coming. You guys know it, I know it, we all know it. Things you can expect, as well as an overview of the game. Her face is just not it. And basically all the different systems, activities, all the different stuff you could do. Overall, to try and help you decide if Black Desert's the right game for you to start up here in 2024. Full disclosure, I do make videos for this game. Oh, Drifty, I'm fully aware, Big Dog. I meant it with love. Amy, you probably have seen them on the internet if you looked around at all. I'm one of the uh, content creators here for Black Desert. Yes, he is. However, I am not a partnered content creator. This video is not sponsored content, and I do not receive any affiliation or compensation or anything from Pearl Abyss uh, in any way What? I am partnered with the company, but I am not sponsored and don't receive any monetization for any of my op views or opinions on the game either. So just to be clear, even if he was partnered, he still wouldn't be making money. Okay whatsoever for creation of this game and on top of all of that uh, content creation what outfit is he using homelessness is not my full-time job i do have a job outside of making youtube videos and everything so i, I think used to, if you're gonna I pick one that person too. that knows the game and is gonna give you an unbiased opinion on it i think i think i'm probably the closest you're gonna get that being said i wanted to be up front get all I mean, he's still biased right he played the game for seven years out in front of you so you can make a decision as to whether or not you want to watch this video at the end of the day, I'm just a fellow MMORPG lover who wants to help you decide if Black Desert is your next game. Dude, look at this dude's hair. Look at how luscious and, like, well-kept it is. Like, you just want to run your hands through it. It looks so fluffy. I hate him. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So, in my mind, there are 11 different aspects to any MMORPG that are, like, the most important things. God, he's so clean-cut, too. God! and you're probably going to experience them in this order. We have character creation, the new player experience, stories and questing, the game world, the combat system, gear progression, the PvE content that's available to you, the PvP content that's available to you, cash shop items, and then what your gameplay loop is at the end of the game. I'm, I'm skeptical how much he actually play, still plays the game. Go through each one of these, show you some footage, clips, and whatnot, giving you a better idea of how these all work. And then in the end, I'll do a little roadmap overview for 2024, what you can expect Thanks, this year. Decoy. And finally, we'll give you my overall opinion, okay. which hopefully is the only biased portion at the end of the video. But uh, anyway, it's always going to be biased. We still want to hear a stake because it's relevant. Right, let's start off with character creation. So Black Desert has... Yeah, what happened with yours? ...were 20 different classes to choose from. You can see that my character list is... Over 20? My man. There's 27 classes. ...completely filled out. The character creation menu itself is pretty there straightforward. There she is. You go through and select which different character you want to play as, and it gives you a little cool animation, shows you some of the... You guys remember the Megan Fox um, advertisement we saw? They literally modeled Sorceress's character after Megan Fox. The skills down in the bottom corner. Like... After you select your class here, you go into the creation menu, and from here you can adjust pretty much everything you That's can. over 20, Blue. I know, but you think he would know. Imagine. So you can adjust the face through like generic preset type faces, as well as actual like morphing of individual body parts to make your face look. No, 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 no. Just I'm gonna save you guys some trouble. 
just go to the beauty album and select whichever one you like the most you can get as detailed as going all the way into the pattern of otherwise you end up with like this droopy ass looking megu who looks like that she might be sleeping with someone else in her family you know like her family tree doesn't branch as much as maybe it should it's more of a wreath situation the speckling in the eyes of your character right so there's like some really really intense features that you can adjust here you have your generic makeup and tattoos that you can do in typical to other games body morphs have a bunch of changes but it makes your character pretty close to naked so i'm not doing that in a video and get myself struck down for that <laughs> you're not gonna get struck down it's in the game dude come on now and then we have i mean we already all know uh based on our thickness tier list that we watched a couple weeks ago uh, that she's dragging the wagon under there, so we don't need to see it. A ton of different hair options that you can select from, so you can change them at your will. You can adjust I like the colors about everything through a whole bunch of different sliders, all the way down to difference between the tips and the roots of the hair. Mm -hmm. You can also physically morph the shape of different components as well. So you can see that you can move like this little piece of hair, up, make it a little fly away or move it up and around. So if yeah, I, I will say that like the character creation in BDO is standing away the best character creator like I've ever seen. It's the most customizable best character creator i have ever seen in any game but i have like uh, honestly if you don't like the exact hairstyle in the game you can you can move threads of hair adjust them a little bit as well and all in all the character creation is pretty robust now classes are gender locked which is one of why is his berserker look so good that's offensive look how good that dude looks wait no that's a musa never mind we're good the biggest complaints that Black Desert I was, I was... <sighs> receives. However, most is that Tuvala? classes have a male and female version. The example I always love to show is like the Kunuichi and the... There it is. And again, I refer you to my previous tier list. The Kuno is the standard. I'm just saying. She is definitely above average. Ninja, where the Kunuichi uses a magical hula hoop. Whereas the ninja will use a whole bunch of different katanas. Yeah, no one gives a shit. Uh, if you watch anime, yeah, you're just, you're going to play ninja. That's fine. So they're both at like a... But if you watch a certain particular type of anime, you're going to watch, you're going to play the kuno. We, you know it. Assassin themes type class, but they have different ways of assassinating their targets. Generally, Perlibus puts out three to... Corporate wants you to tell us the difference between these two pictures. The four new classes a year, and we do have the next ones already announced here. We're going to be getting a class that uses like a pipe and a sword, as well as a gunslinger class announced for the back half of the year. So uh, we got two classes already announced. We'll see what else comes out. But generally, new classes come out a couple times a year. They have events for leveling up those new classes. They give you new character expansion slots that you can oh, purchase yep. in order to be able to play those new classes. The latest new class just came out in December. It's this dual hammer wielding lady. And it look how nasty his scholar look, bro. What are we doing? What? Look that look, God, dude. She looks like she's like Techthalon's wife or something, man. Like, what are we doing? The dude is a pig. I guess to just generally summarize this section of the video, there's a lot of class stuff, a lot of character creation, customization. There's a bunch of outfits that you can purchase in the cash shop. So in general, pretty robust character creation. Now, the next logical thing after creation of your character... Oh, never mind. I'm coming around on it. She's kind of cute. ...is going to be the new player experience. And the new player experience in Black Desert has been revamped time and time again. He's pretty good at this. Again, at this point, I think it's probably the best it's ever been. Essentially, what you do is you create these things called a seasonal character. And these seasonal characters have objectives that the game walks you through. So mm. basically, the game tells you what to do as a new player. Go do this, do this, do this, do this. Then it gives you different items that you use to enhance your gear. The gear as a new player has a higher enhancement success rate, essentially makes it easier. My dude didn't even bother putting the Tuvala at pen. He said, this class just sucks. 
He's wearing duo Naru accessories. He's like, oh, I'm good. You're to progress your character up to the early to mid stages of the game. And in general, you can probably be doing about 75% of the content in Black Desert in about a month, month and a half. So the new player progression experience has been improved tremendously. And I'm talking like hour or two hours tops playing a day type of situation. You can make a couple of these different seasonal characters as they're called and get a couple characters progressed enough to yep. be able to do a whole bunch of different content in the game. I recommend doing that. Doing two season two or three times on different characters is a good, healthy way to experience the game and it also gets you more gear score. Beyond the character progression side as a new player, you also have a new tutorial series that's been added into the game to help you get through it when you're first starting. And additionally, there are certain- Yeah, it's called uh, Blue Squadron's How to Choose Your Class Guide series. Servers that have PvP disabled on it specifically for new players so that you don't have to be subjected to the various PvP activities in Black Desert. Now for some of the more negative sides of the new player experience, the first and foremost should be pretty striking is the uh, UI has a lot of stuff going on. I've already buzzed mm -hmm. between a bunch of different settings and menus and whatnot. There's a lot of different buttons to remember, a lot of different menus that open up all sorts of different things, and uh, it is a little overwhelming at the start. Additionally, Black... Hey man. You should roll your Black Spirit Adventure. I hate it. I hate it. Desert's action combat I system hate does it. make it difficult as a new player to learn different combos for classes. It does have a hot bar system, but the hot bar system's not fantastic. It doesn't let you chain skills together and whatnot. And they've done a lot of different UI features, such as the one you see right here that allows. Also, my man just leaves people on red, bro. My, my man just said, nah, no one gets to be my friend. Holy sh... Allows you to put combos up on the uh, corner of your screen here so that you can, like, memorize them. But uh, in general, a lot of stuff to learn for a new player when you're first getting into it. But that's kind of like with any MMORPG. And I think I'm going to use those points there to segue into the next section, which is going <laughs> to... Guys! <laughs> the, the die is gone! <laughs> he clipped it! He clipped it out of the video! <laughs> it's so subtle! But like, bro, if you know, you know. You know what I mean? He's like molding out of his mind. You know what happened. You know what I mean? The user interface, the game world, the map, all Holy those different aspects shit. of the game. So you can see the user <laughs> interface here. What's actually kind of cool about Black Desert is that you can edit the UI however you want. So you can enable all sorts of different features, menus, and whatnot. You can also turn on combat focus mode, which essentially removes the majority of the stuff from your screen and kind of just minimalistically puts it at the bottom of your screen. Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. Well, I guess I did know you could do that. I just never, I just control you. So a lot of customization available to the UI. As far as the game world map goes, the map is absolutely massive. I'm hanging out here in the desert. This guy has the most guides of any Black Desert creator, other than maybe Chris Polly. He has been making videos. He's been playing this game for six, seven years. Motherfucker has never gone east of the Valencia Desert. Motherfucker has never seen Pilaku in his life. It's, it's not, he hasn't even accidentally wandered over there. Not even like, like, he has never been to history either. Like, at the start of the video, I was over in Calpheon City, up here on top of the tower, so I would... He's a life skiller. Oh, I see that. Right here on top but of like, this tower here. Even life skillers venture into city, the desert. Overlooking the entirety of the city. You can see the map's got 3D elements to it. You can see all the different stuff going on. Icons for all the different NPCs throughout the world. Um, as you explore... I'm looking at his notes. For the map, you unlock the uh, visibility to it, so you can see there's entire... Let's back up for a minute. Why does he have? Did you guys see this? Why does he have that? There are regions that I haven't even touched yet, and I've been. Why would he have that? Game for seven years. Map's absolutely massive, though. You're looking at. Why is that connected? Trade, trade. It was removed. How old is this video? Eight days ago. Yeah, it was out. Oh, I guess trade crates are still in the game, but trading is removed. There is, but he's not. Can you trade at Okia's eye? Maybe he has it connected all the way across the ocean. 
at well over an hour to get to any point. He does. Holy shit. Oh, oh my god. He might be the only player in the entire game. So do I. Shut up. He's the only player in the entire game that has both had sex and has all of his nodes connected from Valencia. That's crazy. Point of it. There's a whole ocean that you can sail and fight sea monsters in. We have a whole other con. Dude sailed to land in the morning light and said, yeah, that's it. That's all I need. There is literally, you can see the path he took to get there, bro. He, he goes to Vel, right? He sailed straight there, did not deviate. <laughs> How is his map this undiscovered? He's been playing There's for years. There's a whole ocean that you can sail and fight sea monsters in. We have a whole other continent to the world up here in the top corner. So yeah, the map's absolutely massive. Tons of stuff to cover and do inside of the game world. Definitely fun if you're one of those like adventure types that likes to explore. Yes, that's me. And then graphically, I think it's kind of hard to speak about this without getting biased, but um, I guess I will just, you know, show you the uh, world best here, turn it into uh, it's the best mode and just let we you know decide it. if you think good. That this is adequate. It literally was made in 2016, has better graphics than New World. That's crazy. Quit graphics for you. And it's then insane. just jumping on a character that's in a different biome, we have my moose over here who's located in the winter region. So you can see you got all sorts of different types of trees, got waterfalls and stuff. You know, it's pretty, pretty nice. You got snow falling. You can see the snow starting to fall. There's a weather cycle, day night cycle. Weather actually impacts the map. So you have precipitation counts over here if you set up farm. Impacts the map is such a strong word. But yes. Farms and stuff. Like, it's really in depth type of gameplay here. So. What's even cool is that the snow will start to pool here in a few seconds. This is my favorite region. To be clear, Mountain of Eternal Winter is by far my favorite region. And you'll see it build up on your armors. Odalita is a close second. So you can see that I'm... I don't know. Odie might be my favorite. And then it's Mountain of Eternal Winter. I don't know. It might be Odie. I think Odie's probably my favorite. Mountain of Eternal Winter, though, like the music and the theming. God, man, I'm just in love with it. starting to get snow build up on my armor. It's starting to build up on the ground over here around the area. So... Uh, it's really, really neat how they uh, have... His Musa is literally a spitting image of him, and it is an actual Giga Chad. That system working into the game. So, that is crazy. Yeah, it has a lot of awesome visual elements in the game. Another change from 2022 that's definitely something I want to point out is also the addition of fast traveling. You can now fast travel to all the major oh, cities yeah. in the game. And the Magnus is way better now. Also, this dude has not even walked into Ulakita. This quest line? Who? This dude didn't give a f Not a singular was given. <laughs> Through the use of these little well icons right here. So think of these as like little fast travel Ooh, points. Who? You go to these locations and you can fast travel around the map for 5 million silver, which sounds like a lot. You, can't you hunt in Ulakita? Uh, it's not a lot. Ellie would know. Is Ellie still here? I'm pretty Black sure you can hunt there, Kate. Okay? And generally is pretty friggin' awesome. Especially so you don't have to take a 45-minute boat ride over to this continent over here. Which he did the first time and then never again. All right, so we've taken a look at the game. There are world. lions there, that's true. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. He might be the best character creator in the game. He might be the best character creator in the game. He made Guardian look attractive. That's insane. I'm going to need him to share that preset with me. For research world and all of that let's now actually crazy you put her in the f tier yes yeah, because most guardians are like maximum height maximum muscle slider like mommies like take a look at the different things that you're going to actually like do in black desert and we're going to start off with did, did, like wow questing. so questing is pretty straightforward in this game it's kind of like any mmo different npcs have different notifications above their head if you interact with them they have a quest that you can go and complete as far as the main storyline questing type situation goes though uh that can be broken down here by looking at the quest log and at the quest log you're going to see that there are tons of main story quests that you can complete here we've got tons of different side quests that you can this is the worst part about the game for a new player in my opinion is look at all the quests that he just scrolled through guys look 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 at this bro uh that can be broken down here by looking at the quest look at this okay and he already did the main story by the way he did the main storyline he's done the first like 200 quests have already been done Look how many more he has to go. Look at the scroll bar. Quest log, and at the quest log, you're going to see that there are tons Look of main that, story bro. quests that you can complete here. It's just too much, here. dude. We've got tons of different side quests that you can complete here. 
There's probably I didn't even know that was a guardian. That's what I'm saying though. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of questing content in the game. Playing through the main storyline, you're probably looking at 60 plus hours, maybe somewhere in that region. I haven't even played through the whole story. You got 13,000 quid more than me. It's like twice my quest. This game. And the reason I haven't is because you don't need to play through the story in Black Desert. He has not awakened his guardian, but he has an outfit on it, and that's what matters. You understand? He doesn't look homeless like Scholar. You can tell that he enjoys this class more than the Scholar. You really just have to complete the initial main starting section of the story to unlock all the systems in the game, and then you can kind of just do whatever you want to do. So if you're trying to pick it up with friends, um, you should be able to get into doing content with them pretty quickly. As far as like the questing experience, only certain- 13k quest, what the hell? I mean, I hate quest. I'm like the anti-quest. It's like the anti-Christ, but like... I have 8,200. Six years. 8,200 quest. And regions of the game have actually completed and fleshed out dialogues so we have the bro i wonder if i can find his like characters i would love to just like use his character templates they're so good alanos region up into the north up here and then we have the frozen region down here to the south and those two regions have the main uh, bulk of the voiced over storylines with acting and cutscenes and whatnot uh, we also have this new continent region that came out here that has storyline quested voice acted type stuff as well the rest of the story content in 30k is easy to do spoken from someone that literally spent over 400 hours questing it's easy guys black desert is kind of just go from NPC, interact mash through dialogue and move on there's also several like different types of quests that provide you different sorts of stat bonuses so for example completing these various questing books give you bonus stats to all of your characters on your account and then we have different events that have different event rewards for completing quests during those as well. So in general, it's your typical MMO experience. Run around, click buttons, uh, complete quests. Yeah. Now, while you're out questing or doing any of the other content in the game, you're probably going to end up fighting monsters. So just taking a look at the combat system here, I'm at one of like the early-ish game grinding zones, so nothing too crazy here. He's 56. But, uh, I just kind of want to show you what the combat here in Black Desert looks like give you an idea if it's something you might be interested in. Turn the UI in. off. Give me um, the experience. The there it is. It just came out. My man knows how to make a YouTube video. What combat looks like. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. This is one of the slower classes in the game. So, like, you know, it's He's got not hitting AOE, anything, slower but... attacks. If I swap over to my Musa and then head over into the training grounds with the enabled, like, keyboard input thing so you can see the actual buttons that I'm inputting on the keyboard to be able to do these different skills and whatnot, you can see that it's a uh, action type combat system where I, I have to actually hit the physical buttons here to be able to yep. execute the different skills that I'm we trying like that. to do. So, um, I mean, just running it through one little set of combos right there. So you can see. Um, yeah, that's that's the combat system in Black Desert. So it's hitting different buttons with the proper timings and executing different skills based on your skill system over here. It allows a lot of different opportunity to come up with your own unique shift, combos. Shift, Every shift, single skill shift, has yeah. different stats and boosts and whatnot to it. For example, you have things like super armor, which makes it so that you can't be CC'd, but you take reduced damage. or Except by grabs frontal guards that allow you to block attacks coming from the front unless it's a grab you have different sorts of uh, cc's you can put on people crowd controls like knockdowns knock ups floats all sorts of different things that you might hear in other types of games um, basically the combat system revolves around uh, impacting your opponents knocking them down doing bonus damage to them while they're in that sort of state of taking bonus damage and then uh, defending yourself using different skills as well so it's, it's high action high combat um, very little assist really well said instance really se, well said in doing it it's not like i can just run down the line and hit these buttons on the hot bar i mean you could but uh yeah hey these grads buddy it's a huge milestone bud that's absolutely massive your ep has never looked bigger okay you're a huge you're huge to it than that so I think that last clip does a pretty solid job of uh, demonstrating the complexity to the Black Desert combat system. There's a lot of stuff to learn on it, which, uh, depending on what you enjoy doing in MMOs, might be either a turnoff or something that's fantastic for you. Is that a cat? So I, I definitely... Is that a cat with his green screen? Are you guys seeing this? I definitely wanted to highlight... Look! ...that clip showing you the buttons and how you have to push all the different that's buttons. A can't. to give you a better idea of what it really is like because at the end of the day for black desert you're going to be doing a lot of combat and that is our next segue into the pve content available to you in black desert 
So first and foremost, the it might be in game, but like he blacked it out though. Majority it looks like a cat. In Black Desert, unless you get into the life skilling trees like I do, is going to come from fighting mobs. Throughout the world of Black Desert, there are dozens of different locations you can go to fight enemies. They all have these little icons on the map, so uh -huh. you can kind of see them all. There's a new feature that was added not too long ago that brings up a little item drop thing that shows you all the items. Okay, this has been this has been in the game forever. They just improved There's it. A drop from this location, what sort of benefits it has for grinding in that location, as well as recommended stat lines and whatnot. So um, this is the majority of your PvE content. You'll probably spend the majority of your time, if you're playing Black Desert, doing this grinding type stuff. Now, in addition to that content, we also have three dungeons that were added into the game. Dungeons is more of like a raid type situation. It's not your typical dungeon length. It's, a raid. it's more like a raid length it's activity. A raid. You can do it with your friends and put together a party and partake in those. Now, besides the dungeons, we also have additional boss content in the form of world bosses. So, for example, I guess it is kind of a dungeon. It doesn't have enough people to be a raid. This world boss over here, Ancient Kudum. There's a world boss over here, Nuver. Uh, tons of different bosses that you can partake in as well. They have specific spawns. You can look. No value pack yet. No value pack. No comma blessing. No book of old moon. None of it. See when they're coming up. But like I said, I don't think he's played a crazy amount as of recent. He only really uh, like puts out his patch uh, no videos. And generally, a large portion of the server will all go out there, fight the boss together, and leave. So you can have a dozen, sometimes almost a hundred people out there fighting those different bosses, depending on the boss and the rewards that it gives. Now, if you don't want to go down the combat path for PVE content, there is also the life skilling path or professions and other. All right, let's judge. Only Guru 10 fishing. It's literally his second day in the video game. Hunting's kind of alpha. Cooking's, cooking's kind of alpha. Alchemy only master six. Imagine. What are you doing gathering on that tree? Ain't no way. Okay, yeah, he's a life skiller. I'll give it to him. His training's a little low, but his price isn't his probably isn't his training character. It probably isn't his fishing character either. Let's be real. Games. There are tons of different life skills you can do. I am one of the biggest This dude, life skills. You know what he doesn't do? Sail. But we could have told you that based on the state of his map. There's life skiller people out there, you can see I'm ranked in pretty much half of them anyway. Uh, so, a bunch of different life skilling you can do. It ranges from things like going up to trees and collecting sap from that. Ain't no way you're collecting sap. You're Master 3 Alchemy. What are you making? Elixir of Destruction for, big dog? I'm so, like, just interacting with trees and collecting... That's so... That's Snowfield Cedar sap. ...the different items, killing different mobs and bursting for their meat. Bearing would just resubscribe for five months. Bear in the woods, thanks so much. Welcome back for five months, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. You know that this mo hated the fact that he had to get on his boat. <laughs> this dude has a base a furious sailboat. This might be a Bartali boat. I'm not sure. It's got the cannons on the deck of the ship. Into the ocean to go and do some adventure. Bro, this dude is crawling. There are Tom Hanks is gonna go by him on a raft with a volleyball or hunting sea monsters out here in the water. You got all these different sea monster spawns out here. Traveling to the, all the islands and being a trader through the islands. Managing he your stopped. own workforce and hiring them all to do different work. <laughs> he, he didn't even make it out of the Velia Harbor. <laughs> he was like, I just need the footage of sailing. F it. He got on the boat. Didn't even make it out of the harbor. He said, that's enough. I just stopped the boat, man. I don't need it. Uh, what do you mean all of your workers are professional? You're a life skiller. Conjecture through the islands, managing your own workforce and hiring them all to do different work and jobs and whatnot, sending them to all. It's offensive. Different tasks. There's a ton of depth. Almost every worker isn't even artisan. To the PVE side of the game. So more than just killing mobs, there's a lot of other activities that you can do besides that. He has an empire. No, he doesn't. They're professional workers. And then two more PVE things that were added that I forgot about. We have the black. Wait, how many workers did he have total? Horse and traveling to the hiring them all to do different work. He covered it. This rat. <laughs> Hold on. You can just see just the top of the work and jobs and what? Well, if you look honestly, we do some investigating. If you look at the scroll bar here, uh, and. <laughs> It is about the same as mine. 
Yeah, it's about the same as mine. So he has close to 100 workers. My, my man has close to 100 workers. But I, again, I'm going to say, these, that is a worker empire. All right? Artisans. Artisans. How do you play the game for six years and have that many professional workers? What not sending the jobs? There's a lot of other activities that you can do besides that. And then two more PVE things that were added that I forgot about. We have the Not even using all of this because they're out of food. I haven't fed them in a while. They all have a job though. Time bosses, which are kind of just boss fights that you can Oh no, I had to take a couple I had to take a couple nodes out because I had to make the Carlstein outfit. But they 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 all have jobs. Partake in every single week. So a series of singular bosses you can fight. Dark Rift bosses, which I have none of available right now, but they are also bosses you can fight every single week. What's the betting that he cuts the video and this die disappears? Those are more like your one-on-one -on -one type boss fight situations. And then we have the Pit of Undying as oh. well over here, which is another boss it's fight still there? type series where you fight progressively more difficult it bosses yet? until you lose. Let him cook. Now you'll notice I brought up a lot of different like single player type activities, and that is one of the things that many people complain about in Black Desert. Look, I know he's explaining fundamental important features here, but I just... There's not a ton of group content. Just to stress it, the dungeons are group activities, so there are three dungeons that you can play with your friends. And there are also PvE grinding zones that are specifically created for multiple players. So, for example, this Giffen Razia Temple is recommended for a party of five. Then Upper. Uh, as Kiwi so aptly named it, Uppies. Uh, I hate calling it that, though, so we're going to call it Upper Guy. It's like Schultz Guard are recommended for a party of three, so it depends. Put the gun down. Ain't no way we're going to recommend people go to Schultz Guard. He's capping right now. Depending on how many friends or whatnot you have playing, there are different activities you can do. But that is one of the areas that Black Desert is still lacking. Not Friends? Not a ton of group-based PvE content. Moving on from PvE, we can get into the PvP category. And there's a ton of different PvP types of things you can do. So, first things first, we have the Red Battle. We do have a hype train. Right now, there's not a single person queued up for this. <laughs> there is PvP in BDO! Look how active the PvP is. But the red battlefield is kind of like your. There's not a Call single Duty person in our PvP situation. So first things first, we have the red battlefield. Oh right my now. God, he actually oh, scrolled a through. Queued up for this. But That's the red crazy. battlefield is kind of like your Call of Duty equivalent PvP. He had this server had to have just come up. There's no shot, dude. There's always people in RBF. It might not be that many, but there's always people in RBF. I stand corrected. I I do stand corrected on it, boys. I situation, you drop in, you play either like team deathmatch or you're playing like I don't know. The GVG arenas have basically ruled this irrelevant, right? So uh, everyone that liked you, RBF is just doing the arenas. Do your typical go in, get randomly queued with a team, fight against other people type activity. Why would you do there RBF when you can do GVG? Non-gear normalized versions, so you can play with people of similar gear, or you can play with people that uh, have way, way crazy gear. Up to you. The next PvP mode to talk about is going to be the Arena of Solaire, and this is probably the closest to like your League of Legends type PvP. So there's an ELO system as you win battles in your group of three. Sincerely. From the bottom of my heart, please do not relate this to League of Legends. I get flashbacks to Nam. It's it's traumatic. Three, you'll either go up or down in ELO. Um, there's pre-made modes as well as random paired modes for ranking. You can configure your gear from a set of presets, so there are only certain gear pieces you can equip, which means it's normalized and essentially comes more down to the uh, skill of the player. And in general, whenever this is active, this tends to be the type of PvP the majority of people are doing. No, he meant League of Legends. He was talking about the ELO system. War of the Roses. This, like, just came out this last patch, and this is one that's been talked about for... Battle of the Mummies. ...for over a year now. Um, this takes place in the entire southern portion of the map and features hundreds of people fighting against each other in PvP for control of one of the different castles. So we have the Odraxia Castle and the Camasilvia Castle, and essentially guilds will fight against each other to take control of the territories and march their way down into the castle. So another interesting PvP mode, this is more targeted towards the top end sorts of players though. Good. We then have the various form of guild wars. So your guild that you are a part of, you can see my guild right here. Uh, Wait, what guild was he in? 
Hong Moon School. Form of Guild Wars. So your guild that you are a part of, you can see my guild right here, uh, will fight against another guild for control over a territory. Getting control over that territory will give you various benefits for being the guild that's owning it. And there's also one of the more popular formats of PvP in the game. And then I think the last major form of PvP is going to be the open world PvP. Black Desert is an open world PvP game with the concept... For now. ...being that you're fighting over control of limited resources. So if somebody else wants to grind at Centaurs and you're grinding there, they can kill you and just take the spot from you. Or vice versa. If you want to grind there and somebody else is there, you can kill them and take the spot. Limited resources, everybody's fighting over the same resources. There are multiple servers, so you can swap between different servers if you are being a uh, player killed. Um, there's also the beginner servers, again, that have open world PvP disabled on them. But yes, in general, there's open world PvP. You could fight anyone you want at any given time. I guess since I mentioned it in that grinding location over here with centaurs, um, there are various grinding locations in the game that have a PvP disabled mode for one hour. So you can flag yourself essentially that I don't want to partake in PvP Marty. for an hour giving you an hour of kind of free reign over the area. And we love Marnie Round Boys. After which that needs to recharge before you can do it again. But if you want to spend long sessions grinding yeah, somewhere where earlier. the income is the best, you can probably expect to run into open world PvP at some point. All right, now it's time to get into the controversial stuff. And let's start off with the gear progression system in Black Desert. Okay. At face value, it's relatively simple. You have an enhancement menu. That's right. Just succeed. Put the cooking clothes in there. Show them. Show them. Show them how simple it is. Put the cook's clothes in there right now. You click on your PC, you Raven upgrade, underscore you get 12 the resource $100. Chance to upgrade, so oh my a goodness. quarter percent chance for this piece of gear. You can improve this enhancement chance with a thing called a pay to win VIP, boys. Fail stack, and this fail stack can be either purchased or obtained through events, or it can be naturally no, 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 gained no. by- Just buy your gear. Don't do any of this. Ignore, ignore what he is saying, boys. Buy your gear! Possibly failing more and more attempts. Every time you fail an attempt, you get an increased enhancement rate, which sounds pretty good. Eventually, it'll go through, right, if you keep doing it forever. However, the enhancement system also punishes you pretty heavily for every fail. Will it go through? Are you sure about that? <laughs> Put the cook's clothes in! Failure, causing your gear Do to it. downgrade a stage. So, for example, this would go from stage 4 to stage 3, if I failed this enhancement right now. Or if it was something like... I like that he called it stage four. ...ring or stage a necklace three. That's or a smart. belt, it might entirely be destroyed from that enhancement process. So if it was like a level four belt, trying to go to level five, I might just blow it up entirely. Yeah, unless your name's Avran or Rapalus. In which case, it just goes from stage four to stage five. So the enhancement system is relatively unforgiving. Your only way to protect yourself is with the use of this item called a cron stone over here. For gear pieces, this will prevent it from downgrading. Nah. And for accessories, it'll prevent it from You just breaking. laz it. So you can see the brutal nature of the enhancement system. Now, they've done a good job for newer players getting into the game with the enhancement rates being improved for the tubular gear that you get from that seasonal character that we talked about way at the start of this video, if you still remember that. However, as you continue to progress, the enhancement system becomes more and more unforgiving, essentially. Now, it is worth noting that you can just purchase upgrades off of the central marketplace from other players. So if you don't want to touch the enhancement system at all... My man. What are you doing with 38 billion? What is going on in here? Bank rolling. Well, you can make purchases. For example, that upgrade that I was just showing you with a quarter percent chance of success, you can just buy the upgrade right here. I'd be able to recommend this game to so many people if the enhancement system wasn't awful. Dust, that was the dumbest comment I've heard in a long time. Okay. You can literally just buy every piece of your gear and never open the enhancement window beyond Tuvala. There is never a reason that you should have to enhance. For any reason. For 135 you can even buy 10 demos off the market now, bro. Silver. Which, for a player at this gear level, you're probably looking at about 150-ish hours worth of grinding. Now, to end on a more positive note on the gear enhancement system, your gear is essentially eternally relevant. What do I mean by that? Every piece of gear upgrades into the next stage of gear. For example, I've got these shoes in my inventory, Uragon's shoes. The next stage of gear... Are I'm peeping his life skill and gear. Did you guys see that, bro? He's got Tet Mano successors Apple, on I've got He's got pen? These shoes in my inventory, Uragon's gear upgrades into the next stage. Oh, he's got pen gathering clothes. Tet, Tet. He's 
kind of a gamer, bro. He's got cons For there. example, I've got these shoes in my inventory, Uragon's shoes. The <clears> no upgrade on the veils? Are these things called Ator's shoes? My Uragon's shoes can be upgraded into Ator's shoes. So it's not like I need If you buy a gear, it has someone else's name on it. You can take the name off. I need to get a new... I think it's cool. Somebody pinged me the other day. My, my dandelion. The one dandy I have ever hit to pin. Uh, I did end up selling eventually. And he's got it. He pinged it to me. Set of gear every single time. And it's a great sword now. It was a variant when I made it. New dungeon comes out or something like that. You can continually upgrade your pieces of gear that you have along with your character progression. All the way from when you first make your account getting Naru gear, up through the tubular gear that you get from your seasonal character, into the various boss pieces like these Uragon shoes, all the way up to these Ator shoes. So that's how I've conducted my entire account. All these red pieces of armor that I have here, I've upgraded from the very beginning all the way up, which is pretty nice. It's not like when a new dungeon drops or a new region drops, you have to go grind that area to get the best piece. Mm. That is wrong. Yeah. That, that's wrong. See, like, like, you need, like, Land of the Morning Light release, you had to go to Land of the Morning Light to get your gloves and do that content. Uh, Mountain of Eternal Winter released, you had to go there to get your helmet and do that content. Um, the boots released, Ulakeda came out, and there's a reason he doesn't have his shoes yet. Your gear is always relevant and can be progressed at your own pace essentially that is true though yes the items that you use for the upgrade do drop from that new region but again those can be purchased off of the central marketplace so for example for those shoes it is this one right here the flame of resonance which good is luck. a high pre-order because it just good luck <laughs> 85 sales 2100 orders we're thoughts and prayers just came out but uh, as it comes out you can expect it to drop down in price, similar to these other flames here. I don't know, man. That flame's going to take mark. forever for people. All right. I think I've spent enough time on the gear progression system. Let's move into the second controversial system in the game, and that is going to be the cash shop. What else could it be? So yes, sir. There are a lot of different items available in here that people could consider to be pay to win. There's always a lot of comment fighting down below. I'll be honest. Pay to convenience. Pay for convenience is absolutely pay to win. A hundred percent. For sure. And I am okay that that exists in video. Hello, whenever I make this video with all people saying, nah, 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 I'm just going to give you... It's literally the idea of saying my time is more valuable than yours because I spent more money. Objective overview of the different types of items that you can buy. Um, fight it out in the comments down below. Wow, it's more pay to win than BDO. Um, I don't know about that. I I don't know what... I know that WoW's economy is currently all messed up because of Season of Discovery and all the bots going on in there. So I don't really know what the impact that has yet. Well, first off, in the category of straight character bonuses and boosts, we have weight improvements that will allow you to store more stuff on your character, as well yep. as inventory improvements for the same purpose. That's what I do. Oh, I just go, whenever I make a new character, it's, you guys saw me on the Kuno. I just went, bought the inventory and the weight from the loyalty shop. Play the game for longer before having to stop and go to a town. We have the three premium subscription items, the value pack, the book of old moon, and the blessing of Cam Sylvia. Those need to be condensed. It's way too hard for players to understand what does what. There shouldn't be three optional subscriptions for a game. Condense them into one, add $10. Everyone will pay $25 a month for all three functions. Tell me I'm wrong. Buy you bonus. Like, no one is not going to buy that. Drop rates, the ability to change your skills whenever you want, as well as improvements. Like, they'll make more money if they do that. Carry weight and EXP bonuses and inventory slots and a whole bunch of other stuff. A full subscription of this is going to set you over $40 a month, so it's a very steep subscription fee to pay if you want to play compared to other games like WoW that has a monthly subscription of, what, $15? New players might not. No, 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 they'll give it to them early on. For the first, like, two months you play the game, you have a free, like, value pack stuff. However, in that same breath, I do want to stress that Black Desert is a... You're wrong. I never wanted comma in Book of Old Moon. So you're telling me that you would not buy a value pack if... It was a value pack, comma blessing, and book of old moon for ten more dollars a month. If it had all of it rolled together, and it was ten more dollars a month total, and you got all of the features, you would not want that. You're crazy. That's just, that's an L take. Buy to play MMORPG. It, it would make the game a little easier to understand and explain to people. They're all about trying to make it a new player experience easier too. It's just a win. It's not a subscription based MMO. I'll pay thirty dollars a month. Mute him. Ban him. Stop. Like, why would you tell them that? Don't you tell them that. $10. This is going on YouTube. You're crazy. ...that it is right now in the NA region. Don't tell them to that. To buy the game, you own it, and you can play it indefinitely. 
these are only purchases and subscriptions that you can pay on top of that i do 20 well understand that it's probably going to be 20 right because like if you buy the coupon you could get it for like 15 bucks a month right most of us if you're smart you're buying the value packs when they're already on sale when it's like the 180 dollar or like the 180 day one with like the 30 percent coupon and it's on sale and you bought the the like the one plus one pearl box like dude like that's you can make it giga cheap bro like beyond cheap initial purchase price you do not have to buy these whatsoever in order to uh by the logic of carries being pay to win in every game is pay to win uh rmt is rampant in every mmo in existence uh it just becomes who is getting the money uh yeah i mean like rmt definitely exists it's always going to exist it's just it's very minimized in bdo in fairness i think that we have a very small problem with rmt mainly because there's no like trading in game between players we have continued service of black it's, it's hard to rmt and bdo so it's that, really hard that is a different business model compared to wow or other mmorpgs i just want to just want to stress that, that these i'm a are coupon like warrior subscription oh dude i literally won't buy pearls unless it's a one plus one box and then i won't spend those pearls unless it's on sale right the kuno i haven't spent a dollar on the kuno zero dollars on the kuno type things not like required to play subscription type things but moving on a little bit further we have things like maids and butlers these give you the ability to access your storages remotely throughout the world so if you're out in the middle these of the are desert, essential you but they give you a bunch of them they give you like 10 of them for you as a free-to-play player though they eh, usually they give you like five during events i think i've accrued up like 30 of them over the last couple of years correct still you could buy a whole bunch of them right off the bat if you wanted to there are tons of outfits for pretty much every single class in the game all of these outfits do provide you bonus stats to your character so you can see combat exp skill exp and penalty from your death being reduced there's also ones that like improve your processing ability or allow you to process from yeah, those storage are and things like that. So there's functional outfits as well. Cosmetic stuff for inside of your house to just decorate the inside of your house. Cosmetic items for your mounts, as well as skill reset coupons and skill selection type coupons. Pets that allow you to gather items without having to manually interact with them, aka they basically automatically gather all the items from the mobs that you kill. Yeah. You do get a Keep in mind though, guys, they give you all this stuff. They give you basically the the elements that you need to almost make full tier three pets or close to it. You know what I mean? If you get unlucky, you'll end up with some T2s. But like, you know, like they give you a fair amount of pets. They give you a decent amount of maids. Of like they give you like in a bunch of inventory. Like a new player for starting the game. And every year they give away a couple of the game is like free in a lot of cases. So like buying the season pass, you're still only at like thirty dollars. And that's if you bought it for full price without using your coupons which you have as a new player I'm for free as well and then you're like then you just like double or triple everything and you have a horse flute and all that Throughout stuff period. i think that the ultimate horse flute is one of the more like basic things that like a lot of players kind of need but like you don't really need it when you start the game but like as you get more invested into the game you're gonna want the infinite horse flute um it it's, is what it is but you could just buy a whole bunch of these right off the bat what up comanche out. And then the last big one that I want to take down is... Oh, yeah, everybody talks about the tent, right? But I was just talking, like, the horse flute is something that a lot of people skip over. I think that, like, it's like tent and then the horse flute. The campsite here that essentially allows you to remotely repair... Ah, uh, tent, fairy, horse flute. Although you don't need to pay to win the fairy, so no, take the fairy off. Anywhere you want, accept different buffs, buy potions, all sorts of different stuff, right from this little thing, without having to travel back to towns. So you can see there's lots of different items for purchase. They provide you varying levels of benefit to your account. Like I said, I'll talk more about my opinion on these things at the end of the video. Just for now, just giving you the objective cover of the different items that are there, allow you to make your own decisions on if you think those things are pay to win or not. But this is gonna take me to the final section of the main portion of the video here, and that is going to be the overall gameplay loop in Black Desert. Uh -huh. And it's pretty similar to many other MMORPGs, right? You're gonna go out. Please. Oh God. Do an activity gather mm -hmm. resources okay. use those resources to upgrade your gear and then go grind in the next spot or go okay i love the way that he phrased that yes you're gonna do an activity that activity is gonna give you resources and then you're gonna use that to upgrade your gear that's exactly right what that activity is though entirely up to you do the next gap look at these connected nodes this dude has Achman. what is going on here gathering rotate dude has crescent shrine or go build a bigger boat uh, go do the next level difficulty of dungeon. Crescent Shrine right? is like vanadium uh, or something. It's the typical MMORPG gameplay loop. Go out, do activity, gain resources, upgrade your character, go out and do the next level of that, and continue to do that. Black Desert puts out new content, new... Re oh, it's Trace? Oh, let, let me check. It's been a while since I've looked at my Crescent Shrine node. It's titanium. Shut up. 
I know what I'm talking about. I thought it was vanadium, but it is titanium. Titanium and vanadium are essentially the same in rareness. They're, for all intents and purposes, they're basically the same. Regions and new upper end stuff probably once every three months or so. The most recent edition just came a couple of months ago with the addition of the Ulkita region, which I probably heard through the pronunciation. I haven't even no, touched it, it because it's so far beyond my gear score that uh, it's no real reason for me to travel over here. Yeah, yet. it's fine. Nobody so cares. They are all... you, the, you should do the main story in Ulkita, though. It's actually pretty good. It also gives you a good alchemy stone. I was putting top end gear into the game. It's uh, generally flows out at a pretty good clip. Likewise, they do go back and touch lower end spots as well to make them more valuable or easier for newer players to get into. And in general, I think they do a pretty solid job of balancing the top end stuff to do as well as the lower end stuff to give everybody in the game something to do. Now that's like the gear progression side. As far as the PvP side, it depends what type of PvP you're doing. If you're doing the Guild War type stuff, if you're doing it on non-gear normalized versions, um, you want to be bumping up your gear as high as you can to be able to kill people faster. Uh, likewise, if you're doing the gear normalized PvP, it's going to be more about practicing your mechanics of your class so that you can uh, beat people or learning matchups or one-on-one -on -one type things or or like Arena of Solaire, adjusting your build to be able to fight certain classes and things like that. Uh, more strategy on that side. And I think that is going to bring us to our final portion of this video where we're going to give you my- I think he said final portion of the video like a hundred times so far. My verdict of Black Desert here in 2024. Uh, see my it. opinions on all the different stuff that I talked about here. And uh, yeah. So the RP walk? Running it down the line. I think that the- he is so good at character creation, it hurts. Character creation and classes that are available to you in Black Desert are probably the best I've ever seen in any MMORPG. There's so many different things that you can adjust, True. so many different play styles with all these yes. different classes. Agree. Um, it really, really is fantastic. The only thing is that there's not really that trinity of classes where you have that tank healer DPS. Pretty much every class does its own tanking, healing, and DPS. So if you want to play as like a certain role that doesn't really exist in Black Desert, but every class, combat, and whatnot is really just fantastic on all of them. The new player experience has gotten significantly better since I started making content for Black Desert almost yep, five it has. years ago now. Absolutely. Just progressively better every single time, and they continue to make improvements to it every single month. The story and questing in Black Desert does leave a bit to be desired, but also that's kind of the state with most of these MMOs out there. The story quests just really aren't anything too crazy. It's not... Boy, he really undersold that. The, the story and the questing sucks, okay? It just sucks. Land of the Morning Light is at least a little engaging. You feel like all the little villages have their own thing going on. It's pretty good. Especially if you're like, you're into questing and stuff. That's the best one. Um, Mount of Eternal Winter isn't super bad either. At least it's voice acted. Medea sucks. Um, even like the new Jordan quest. I have not gone through the new Jordan quest for the Ancient Stone Chamber. I hope it is a lot better. But the questing overall is so long. It takes away, even that the quests were good. You have so much questing to do, you end up speeding through it anyway. That's the biggest problem. They need to condense the quests down to be a lot shorter and people would care more. Like, if, if it was good. If it was still bad, no, still no one is going to care. But, like, it does need to be shorter than about 1,500 quests. Not something like a story-based game. I got bored in Land of the Morning Light. Exactly. But it was solid when you started, right? It's just solid, but, like, it's just so long, man. Like That you'd be playing. It's not like a Ghost of Tsushima or like a Witcher type gameplay, right? It's an MMORPG. There's hundreds, thousands of people all doing the same thing as you. A um, couple voiced over storyline sections as well as a couple cutscenes is nice. But in general, it's your typical questing story experience in an yeah. MMO. F tier questing. Graphically, I think that Black Desert's probably one of the best games out there. If yes. not the best on the graphic side. S tier I, I graphics find it hard for an to, MMO. Like, with anything like that. Agreed. The combat system I also think is probably one of the best you're going to play in any MMO. S tier for any MMO ever. It sets the bar in the genre for combat. MMO, it is a skill-based combat system. Hands it's down. not like a button mashing on a hot bar type situation. There's strategy to it, how you approach fights. You have different buffs and debuffs you have to apply and manage on your character. Uh, it, it's definitely more like a combat-based game than a typical MMO game. The PvE content in the game has gotten a lot better over the last couple of years with the addition of the dungeons as well as party grinding zones. Still leaves Boss a little blitz. bit of group content yeah, to be desired, like, but they've added a ton of single- I still think that the PvE content in BDO is lacking far, far under what it should be. Player bosses. Um, which... I think that if you compare the PvE content in BDO, although it has improved lately, like he said, if you try to compare that to something like Lost Ark, it's just an L. We're just taking Ls everywhere. You know what I mean? 
like their their raid system is better than ours overall just like the, all of their group content is stronger like which is one of my favorite activities in the game because the uh, our large scale pvp is better though. system is so fun because our combat is better fight bosses with different sorts of mechanics and whatnot is a really fun experience in the game it's not something like a dark souls boss fight so don't get super excited like that's what you're getting into but it is nice to have a different variety of bosses and whatnot to play against even destiny was better oh god destiny was way well okay 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 the grind in bdo is way better i would say BDO's PvE content is better than Destiny's. The only part that Destiny like actually had that is better than BDO is the raid content, and that is such a small part of what goes on in Destiny that like I would not. I think it's just Destiny just takes that L. The raid content in Destiny is hands down the best experience I've ever had in any game ever. It is just that good. The problem is the grind to try to get to that raid content is so miserably dull and boring that. You just hate your life the entire time you're doing it. It just takes away from the overall format of the game. PvP side, they've also added a bunch of content since the last one of these videos like, came no out. No one logs into Destiny. It's like, God, I can't wait to do my strikes today. Like, that's oh, The biggest one being the Arena of Solaire. The Garen normalized ranking PvP system is something that people have wanted for a long time. There's cool rewards yeah, the, for finishing. The new GVG system that just came out is crazy good. Hopefully he mentions that. The top portions of that. I think they did a really great job with it. As somebody that does mostly life scaling, gathering, cooking, those types of activities. Oh, Grand Heart, I agree. Uh, having that PvP option and, and being able to recognize how, how well they did with it is a, is a pretty pretty cool feature there. Um, when we get into the more controversial stuff, though, with the gear progression, I'm a big not fan of that. <laughs> big, big anti the upgrade system. Yeah, just buy the gear, though. Black Desert. And they've done some things to make it better over the last few years, but... Um, in general, it's still pretty pretty cruddy when you get up to the higher stages. It is nice, however, that you can just purchase the gear upgrades, but if you plan yes. to do it, upgrading it all yourself, uh, you're not going to have a great time with the gear enhancement system in this game. Uh, finally, cash shop side, there definitely are some items in here that can be considered pay to win, right? You yep. get straight up stat bonus. Bro, you can literally sell outfits on the marketplace. Let's not, let's not beat around the bush, okay? It's definitely pay to win. And so for those asking how much it's pay to win, I'm going to give you the metric, okay? You can either grind for one hour or pay 40 US dollars. 99% of players are going to grind for the hour. Okay. There are a very small amount of players that are going to keep the game servers running for the rest of us that are going to pay this money. But like, this is kind of the metric that I know. Okay bonuses for buying some scrolls or whatnot that are in there that give you like hp for an hour not that it's going to make a huge difference but they are straight up upgrades things like the hedgehog pet give you an increased amount of stuff that you gather while it's only a couple percent uh could still result in you making more money than somebody else doing the exact same thing as you so a little little disappointing on that end however overall the cash shop items aren't anything that you absolutely need to purchase right the game gives you the free maids which basically function as Correct. inventory weight Correct. Uh, which makes it easier for you to manage as a newer player so you don't need to buy those things, but it's a huge amount of convenience, in my opinion, to purchase them. If you're doing something like purchasing for straight up like a gear upgrade and buying the items to make those, such as like cron stones, to guarantee that that gear doesn't fail or fall down, you're going to be spending probably tens of thousands of dollars. It's an insane amount of money to have to spend in a game. So I would definitely recommend not spending money in whaling yeah, if that's no. your goal. But if you want to buy a it's couple of type bro. situation to make your character look a little prettier or uh, do something like that, definitely, definitely not the worst cash shop out there. And then finally, the end game gameplay loop is pretty much similar to any MMO out there that you might have played, right? You're going to be going out, grinding, doing activities, come back. Up to be clear, the reason people like to stick with BDO's end game is because our grinding is way, way better than most of the other B like. If you look at World of Warcraft, if you look at the mob grinding in World of Warcraft and you compare that to BDO, BDO just blows it out of the water. It's not even close, dude. At least it feels engaging because the combat system is so smooth. Yes, it's repetitive for many, many hours, but like it's way more enjoyable. <laughs> it is so much more enjoyable. Upgrade your gear, do more, repeat, rinse and repeat. It's typical MMO loop. If you don't like the you don't need to grind mobs in WoW, you do if you need, you're like most people are playing like classic WoW or hardcore WoW, you know, like those people, those people are those people are grinding all the time, right? That system in Black, but you're right in retail WoW, there's there's no grind desert, or if you don't like the life skills in Black Desert, it's probably not going to be something for you, right? Unless you're grinding dungeons or whatever. So all in all, final verdict here. I would strongly recommend. Picking yeah, we don't count classic. Yeah, we do. Wait, what? Classic counts, bro. Black Desert. Not only because I'm a content creator and I want you to watch my videos. That's not the whole reason. 
Um, the real reason is because there's so much content in the game, you'll very likely get your wow, $10 mommy? out of Sorry. it, right? So much stuff to do, a whole world to explore. Um, I mean, you could spend hundreds of hours just traveling around the world map, right? A lot of, lot of content, a lot of fun activities to do. I really, really would strongly recommend it. But that is going to do it for this video. If you did find it useful, let me know in the comment section down below. And you know, we haven't actually seen Evil do us hard. Oh my God, that like ratio is crazy good. That is insanely good like ratio. Such good takes on the game. There's the video right there, guys. Make sure you go give it um, a view, a like, interact with the video. We love Evil Do Us Harm. The goat at it again. We love him. We love him.